Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, it's going to be a very short video. I'm going to be covering rotator cuff injury. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. Give it a thumbs up now. You're going to love it, but I don't want you to forget. So please do it now. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I'm now offering Next Generation NCLEX reviews, okay? You can reserve your spot for an NCLEX review, or if you want one-on-one -on -one private tutoring sessions, you can also reserve your spot at nexusnursinginstitute.com. While you're there, be sure to check out the audio lessons I have available. I've made my audio lessons specifically for students currently in a nursing program that are struggling. You have to do really well on your next exam or you, you're you not going to pass. Yeah, I made it for you. So be sure to check out the audio lessons. Again, nexusnursinginstitute.com. All right, let's take a look. So rotator cuff injury. First of all, the rotator cuff, it's a group of four muscles that you find in the shoulder. Okay. So obviously rotator cuff injury, it's going to be injury to those muscles. Now I want you to take a look. Right here, it says a tear in the rotator cuff may occur as a gradual, so it happens slowly, it's, got, it's happened slowly over time, get gradual degenerative process due to aging. It can be due to repetitive stress, especially overhead arm motions. That's important. So somebody who's like, um, I'm not good at sports, but baseball, the person who throws the ball, I think that's called the pitcher, right? So you know how the their arm goes over their head? You see this like this. So this repetitive action can cause damage to that area. OK, so especially over the overhead arm motions or injury to the shoulder while falling in sports, repetitive overhead motions such as guys, you see this list that looks like a beautiful select all that applies to me. Take a look. Swimming weightlifting, swinging a racket or a tennis um, racket. A racquetball often causes injury. Other causes, falling onto an outstretched arm or hand, a blow to the upper arm, heavy lifting or repetitive work motions. Now, take a look down here. The positive drop arm test. This is important to know. A positive drop arm test is another sign of rotator cuff injury. So in this test, the arm is abducted. Remember, you have adduction and abduction. Adduction, ADD, that's closer to the core. And abduction, which is what we're talking about here, is away from the core. So a positive drop arm test is another sign of rotator cuff injury. In this test, the arm is abducted 90 degrees, straight out, okay? 90 degrees, and the patient is asked to slowly lower the arm to the side. So you have this arm straight out. Look at my arm, right? You see my arm? And so you ask the patient to slowly lower it down to their core or to their trunk. If the arm falls suddenly, so they're not able to do it slowly, they're trying to, but the arm falls suddenly, rotator cuff injury is suspected. That's what's known as your drop arm test. An x-ray alone uh, is not beneficial in diagnosis. A tear can usually be confirmed by MRI. So a great diagnostic um, tool is the drop arm test, but that's not um, definitively diagnostic. You can do an x-ray, but that's not definitively diagnostic, right? Usually definitively diagnostic is going to be through an MRI. Now care for the patient. A uh, patient with partial tear or cuff inflammation, they can be treated conservatively. We love to be conservative, right? We don't want to go straight into surgery. So conservatively, it can be treated with rest, ice, heat, NSAIDs, corticosteroid injections um, into the joint, ultrasound, and physical therapy. Now, if that patient does not respond to conservative management, then we can uh, move on to something such as surgery, surgical repair um, might be needed. A sling, a sling and swath or, sh or a shoulder mobilizer can be used immediately after sh surgery. So if the patient, patient has to have surgery, after surgery, they're gonna have something to uh, support that rotator, the rotator cuff area. So they'll get something like a shoulder immobilizer or a sling to help uh, limit movement. Here's the thing though, Lim uh, movement cannot be limited for too long because what happens is the patient will get something called a frozen shoulder. So take a look. It says a sling 
and SWAP or shoulder mobilizer may be used immediately after surgery to limit shoulder movement. However, the shoulder should not be immobilized for too long. And here's why. Because frozen shoulder, that's what's known as the atherofibrosis may occur. Pendulum exercises and physical therapy should begin on the very first post-op day. Now the pendulum exercise, you know, just like how a pendulum swings like this, same thing. That exercise is going to be that arm swinging. Okay. Pendulum exercises, physical therapy. You're going to start that with the patient first day. You expect that to be ordered for the patient first day. Weight restriction uh, for lifting are usually given and pay we don't expect them to recover for about six months. Guess what? That is your rotator cuff injury in a nutshell, guys. Okay, that is the meat and potatoes, the most important things you need to know about rotator cuff injuries. Please, in the comment section, comment section, sound off. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to, me to cover more extensively. And also, don't forget, you guys can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. My handle's the same everywhere, Nexus Nursing. Go ahead and book your NCLEX review or a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session right now by going to my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And if you're a current student, be sure to check out the audio lessons I, avail audio lessons I have available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Guys, thank you so much for watching. You guys will catch me on the next video.